Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for the webinar today. We're still waiting on just a few more folks for us to join, so we'll get started about two minutes past the hour. All right. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Today's webinar focuses on Action for Healthy Kids 2019-2020 School Grants for Healthy Kids Grant Opportunities, specifically our parent grants. I will be your presenter for today's session. My name is Sean Wade, and I am the Senior Manager of Volunteer Initiatives at Action for Healthy Kids. My colleague Ellen Dillon, our Senior Field Manager, will be assisting and supporting us uh, through the webinar technology and by answering some questions for you today. We can review some quick logistics before we get started. Once you're linked in, you'll see a control panel that's usually on the right side of your screen. You can use your telephone or speakers to listen to the presentation, but everyone will be muted to avoid static and background interference. There is a dialogue box at the bottom of your control panel. You can type any questions that you might have into that dialogue box as we go along, and we'll try to get them answered later in the presentation or via email following the webinar. Ellen will also try to respond to some of those as we go along. The webinar is being recorded. Links to the recording and the handouts will be sent to you two to three business days after the webinar. So here's the agenda for today's 45-minute webinar. We'll try to get uh, out right around that 45-minute time. If there are more questions, we may go a little bit over that, but we'll try to get you out by 45 minutes past the hour. First, I'll give you a little bit of background on Action for Kids and the work that we do in schools. We'll then briefly cover all of our 1920 grant opportunities while spending most of the time talking about parent grants specifically. We have split parent grants into two opportunities this year, one for nutrition projects and one for physical activity projects. We'll talk about that change and cover both of those opportunities today. These grants are associated with our Parents for Healthy Kids initiative, so we'll also cover what that entails. Later on, we'll discuss some project ideas, how to apply, some important deadlines, and give you some tips for applying. As I mentioned earlier, we will be answering questions throughout the webinar, and we'll answer some at the end as well. Well, let's get started. First, I'd like to give you a little background on Action for Healthy Kids. Our vision is a world in which every kid is healthy, active, and ready to learn. Action for Healthy Kids fights childhood obesity, undernourishment, and physical inactivity by helping schools become healthier places. We are moms, dads, teachers, students, school and community leaders, and school wellness experts who have all banded together to create healthier learning environments for our children. We believe that everyone has a part to play in ending the nation's childhood obesity epidemic and making schools healthier places to learn. Our programs, tools, and resources make that possible. Our goal is to create school communities where children learn how to make healthy choices from the minute they walk in the front door to the minute they leave at the end of the school day. Action for Healthy Kids was founded in 2002 by former Surgeon General David Satcher. Today, we have more than 120,000 members and constituents in our network. We also partner with dozens of professional associations, government agencies, and corporations at both the national and local levels. As you just heard, Action for Early Kids focuses on schools. So why schools? Well, simply, schools reach most children and adolescents in the community, and they provide kids with opportunities to practice healthy behaviors uh, by kids spending about 1,200 hours per year in school. Teachers, administrators, and school staff are key role models, and so are parent volunteers in the school. Curriculum standards for health usually include nutrition and physical education. Shouldn't our policies, practices, and climate reflect those standards rather than conflict with them? 
and schools show kids what we value and what is important in our community. That's also why we partner with parents to make sure that what kids are learning in school, they're also taking home and practicing at home as well. These are also some good talking points for you to encounter if you, uh, if you encounter skeptical members of your school community or are struggling to gain some administrative support. These points really can reinforce why school health and wellness simply make sense. Another way to garner support is by contacting your health and wellness work, connecting your health and wellness work to the learning connection. That is, that kids who are healthy and have access to regular physical activity learn better. I mention this because our school grants are not just about making kids healthier, they are also about helping kids be better equipped to learn. We know that kids who eat better achieve academically. Studies have shown that undernourished children tend to have low energy, are often irritable, and have difficulty concentrating. They also score lower on vocabulary, reading comprehension, and arithmetic tests. And some of the same things can be said for kids who do not get as much physical activity. So really that learning connection is a key piece in making the case to your administration for the importance of school health work. Okay, we'd like to start with telling us a little bit about yourself. So we want to know who's on the call today, and I'll go ahead and, and start this poll so that you can answer the question of who you are as you're thinking about applying for one of our parent grants. So I'll give you just a few, uh, about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to answer that question. Go ahead and, and click on whichever best describes you. Right, it looks like we have mostly parents or caregivers on the line, about 40% or so, uh, a few community members or, or uh, people who work for a community organization, and then about 25% of you either work for a school or a district. So it's great to see that we have a, a bit of a mix here, but definitely uh, as makes sense with the parent grants, are led, we are led by, by mostly parents that are on the line. All right, I'll go ahead and close that poll uh, so that we can open up another poll. The other uh, thing that we want to know is, have your, has your school ever applied for an Action for Healthy Kids grant before? You may have applied in the past for a Game On grant or a breakfast grant, a parent grant, um, or uh, a combination of those grants. Uh, this one you can respond to as many as apply to you and your school, um, or if you're not sure, you can answer that as well. So most of the folks on the line are either not sure or have never applied for an Action for Healthy Kids grant. So it's great. Uh, welcome and thank you for finding us and, and for your interest in our grant program at Action for Healthy Kids and specifically the parent grant. Uh, I know there's a, it looks like a handful that, uh, that have applied for Game On or Breakfast or a parent grant in the past. So we're happy to have you all back as well. Uh, but certainly for those who are new to us, uh, welcome and, and we'll try to uh, make sure that we go through in detail the process for how you can apply for a parent grant today. Go ahead and close that poll and then move on and, uh, and continue with our agenda. So we've covered a little bit of background on who Action for Healthy Kids is and why we work with schools. So let's talk about grants. Uh, up there you see some basics of our 2019-2020 School Grants for Healthy Kids program. So we want to talk first about all of our grant offerings, just briefly, and then we'll dive into parent grants specifically. Grant awards range from about $1,000 and up. We'll award grants to K-12 schools, parent groups like PTOs or PTAs or other parent committees, and school health and wellness teams. I do want to note now, though, so quickly, unfortunately, grants cannot be awarded to community-based or nonprofit organizations. These grants are really intended to be awarded to schools and school groups specifically. So if you are working with a community organization or are partnering with a community organization to complete this grant or are part of a community organization working with a school, just know that the check will need to go to schools if you are awarded the grants and the school and parent will have to be the grant applicant. Also of note, K-12, K-12 simply refers to schools that serve any grades K-12. It does not have to be a full kindergarten through senior year of high school institution where all grades are served. Grants may be awarded to elementary, middle, or high schools. If you are an early childhood center that serves pre-K as well, we can fund your school only if you also have kindergarten or higher grades and grant funds benefit that population. If you have further questions about that piece of eligibility, please go ahead and enter your questions in the question box and we'll address those for you. 
Okay, a little bit more overall about our 2019-2020 grant opportunities. First, breakfast grants focus around implementing new alternative breakfast initiatives. If you are interested in learning more about breakfast grants, check out our breakfast grant webinar that is Thursday afternoon. For the physical activity and nutrition grants, we do have two grant opportunities available. Obviously, today we focus mostly on the second one that's listed there, parent grants, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about Raymond grants right now. The Gamon grants require a school-level applicant, as well as the names and commitments of the principal, PE teacher, and food service manager. Schools selecting a Gamon grant will need a project plan that addresses both physical activity and nutrition initiatives. So that's going to be a key difference as we talk a little bit about parent grants going forward. The parent grants are split this year into two separate grant applications and two separate grant offerings, one for physical activity initiatives and one for nutrition initiatives. So with the parent grants, you choose one project, physical activity or nutrition, and with the Game On grants, you have to do both and make sure that there's that full school health team that's in place. The parent-led grant requires a parent leader as well as a school-level co-lead, and it's critical to note here that although these grants are called parent grants, any family member or person in a parent type of role can apply for these grants. So any caregiver uh, or guardian can apply, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, foster parents, etc any other individuals that are supporting and championing a healthier school environment in their school. Um, also, I want to point out here that schools can apply for more than one grant. For example, both a Game On and a Parent Grant, or both a Breakfast and a Game On Grant. The only exception to this, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes, is that schools can only apply for one of the two Parent Grant options. If any of these other opportunities do interest you, though, I encourage you to check them out on our website and consider applying. Uh, we do have a Game On Grant uh, webinar, uh, recruitment webinar tomorrow afternoon and the breakfast grant webinar on Thursday afternoon, as I mentioned. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the grant impact. So what happens, what do schools say about our grants? And I want to share a quote from this year's grant recipients so you can get a sense of the projects and the impacts that these can have. So I'm not going to read this specifically to you, but, but really, these are, uh, this is pretty indicative of um, what we know about and what we see and what we hear from schools after they've uh, received our grant funding. And it's great to see the success that schools are having with the grants that we offer. So as we go through, I'll, I'll share a few more quotes from schools, too, so you can get a better sense of what some of the existing schools that are funded currently are doing and some of the successes that they've had. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Parents for Healthy Kids now. Parents for Healthy Kids is a national initiative created for parents by parents as a way to help parents and caregivers understand and tap into the power they have in schools to become effective change agents for student health. Parents for Healthy Kids includes resources, communications tools, workshops, and grants, all specifically designed and targeted toward parents, to help them start conversations, lead projects, and change the culture around school health. You can check out and visit Parents for Healthy Kids by going to parentsforhealthykids.org. There you can learn how to become a champion for school health. You can access, access free tools and tips to help you create change in your school. You can get inspired by other parent champions and the work that they've done in their communities. And you can learn about local parent workshops that might be happening in your area. And of course, you can also go there to apply for grants to help your school, which we'll talk about more in detail as we go along. Okay, now let's combine what you just learned about our grant program and our Parents for Healthy Kids program and get more into detail about our parents' uh, grants specifically. But before we get started, I want to go over just a few changes that we've made to the 2019-2020 grant cycle and why we've done so. So I know when we talked earlier, you submitted your answers to the poll, that most of you are new to Action for Healthy Kids grant opportunities and so are not familiar with some of the historical parent grants that we've done in the past. And that's fine, but, but one of the things that I want to talk about is, is some of the changes that we've made this year. And the biggest one is one that you can see there at the top, that we have split parent grants into two opportunities. You can now choose to focus on either a physical activity project or a nutrition project with your grant. In the past, Previous editions of the parent grants, had to, you had to combine uh, or do both a physical activity and a nutrition initiative similar to the game on grants that I mentioned earlier. The idea for this change going forward and a few others that we'll discuss as we go along 
really came out of talking with parents who have both applied for and received our parent grants in past years, and, uh, and parents who received Game On grants previously as well. We heard your feedback, we took it to heart, and we have tried to simplify these grants in several ways to make sure they can really truly be parent-led grants. So these are now specific project-based grants with the goal of successfully implementing a school health-focused project, either physical activity or nutrition, with, uh, with the goal of then building momentum within the school to take on more and more and focus more and more on comprehensive school health as they go forward. So you no longer have to try to come up with a nutrition initiative, initiative if your project really focuses on making recess more accessible, or a physical activity component if your project is really about creating a school garden. We also wanted to simplify some of the requirements that we'll talk about as we go along, including those around the school health teams and the school health index, and we'll get to those. A couple other notes about parent grants. Schools can receive $1,000 in grant funding. That's true for both the physical activity and the nutrition components. Uh, these grants also uh, require a parent applicant to both apply for and lead the projects. Uh, and the parent applicant can either be an individual parent or a family member, as we talked about earlier, uh, or a member of your school's PTA, PTO, other school parent group, um, or someone who is participating as a parent on the school wellness team. The application does also require a school-level co-lead to work in partnership with this parent-type applicant. Um, and that's important because we really want to make sure that the school has bought in um, and, is, and is part of these projects as well. This co-lead could be in a position such as a principal, it could be a teacher, it could be a school nurse or a food service manager or a counselor, uh, but really it, it should be a, an individual at the school level who can make some decisions and really get buy-in uh, from the entire school community. Uh, and so it can collaborate and coordinate the programmatic work with stakeholders both in and out of the school building. Okay, so I mentioned on the previous slide that we have broken the parent grants down into two options, the nutrition project and the physical activity project based grants. That means we now have two separate parent grant applications. So as you're going through the process to apply, you will see two different parent grant options uh, for applications and two different sets of uh, application instructions, one specifically for the nutrition project and one specifically for the physical activity project. <clears throat> you can also then use this flowchart to help you figure out which grant you, you, uh, you should apply to. So starting with, is the primary grant applicant a parent or a school or district employee? If it's a parent, really you can focus on then, does it include both a physical activity and a nutrition component or one or the other? and go from there as you answer those questions. You can get to either a Game On grant, a physical activity project parent grant, or a nutrition project parent grant. If you're a school or district employee, uh, you can go down that flow and see a Game On grant or possibly a breakfast grant if you're looking at really focusing on breakfast rather than specific to physical activity. Once you've decided that one of the parent grants is right for you, let's talk eligibility. The specific eligible states are identified here on your screen. Please note that if your state is not eligible, you may be eligible for a Game On grant or a breakfast grant, as we talked about. So be sure to check out actionforhealthykids.org for more information on those opportunities. We'll also send you additional info on Game On grants after today's webinar. Also, it's important to highlight that our priority areas for the parent grants include schools within 15 miles of an Aldi store. Note that for some of you, your entire state may be eligible, while for others, uh, it's just maybe part of, uh, part of the state. Uh, it's particularly true for states like Nebraska, Louisiana, uh, and, and other states like that that you can see on the map there. I should also note that that 15-mile priority limit is just that. It's a priority. It's not a requirement. So that does not mean if your school is, say, 22 miles away from the closest Aldi store or even further that you should not apply. We do have flexibility within that limit, and, it, and as I said, it's not a requirement, so we will definitely review all qualified applications, and we do encourage all of those schools to apply. If you're not sure whether or not your school fits into that 15-mile priority area, not a problem. You can go to Aldi's website, enter your school's address, and identify the closest Aldi store to your school. Remember, all schools in these eligible states are able to apply, but priority will be given to those schools within the 15-mile radius of an Aldi store. Questions? Uh, please go ahead and enter them into that chat box or email us after today's webinar. We are happy to help. 
All right, now we'll break down the two types of parent grants available, those for physical activity projects and those for nutrition projects. In each, we'll walk through the options for project strategies, some project ideas, and finally, the goals or deliver deliverables for the project. In other words, what we're asking your school to accomplish by the end of the grant. Let's start with the physical activity project grant. As you move through the application, you'll see that we ask you to classify your physical activity initiative into the categories listed on your screen. You know, so you'll see those options, recess, place-based refurbishing, classroom physical activity, or before and after school programming. You will also note that the parent grant application does not allow you as an applicant to choose an other category for the chosen physical activity and nutrition initiatives. The logic behind that is that we are really looking to best practices and manageable projects to be led by parent and family members. So those are the grant project ideas and areas that parent types of leaders have been able to show and, and really have the most impact in doing. So for example, we don't include anything here like policy work or uh, schedule of the day, but we do have some things that parents have really shown in the past that they can lead and be successful at. If you don't see the focus of your grant project here, you can also consider the game on grant opportunity, which does have a longer list of potential grant initiatives. Further along in the application, you'll have the opportunity to describe your project in more detail and how it fits into these grant categories and the deliverable requirements. Some of the great ideas that we've seen in the past for projects that focus on physical activity include things like recess carts, learning labs uh, that are kinesthetically focused, fitness and yoga rooms, monthly family fitness nights, running or walking clubs before or after school, uh, refurbished playground and play spaces, so spending the money on building up the playground or adding new equipment or paint on the, on the playground. Stability balls, wobble chairs for the classroom. You can see some of those in that picture there that's, uh, that's on the slide there. And really unique and creative ideas. We've seen tons of those from schools that have applied in the past. Uh, in the comments section here, if you'd like to add your ideas for physical activity projects, whether something that you've done in the past or what you're planning on applying for for this grant, we'd love to see those too. We'd love to hear and, and see those new ideas and, uh, and work with you on, on workshopping those and, and, and building them into a really great grant application. And here's another quote, as I mentioned earlier, we'll share some of these as we go along, uh, but this is from a fifth grade student at a, an, an elementary school in Ohio where their school started a walk and bike to school program in the morning uh, and a morning walking club. And uh, he really uh, says that how much he likes the exercise and getting the rewards from the grant. I want to share another grant, uh, another quote from a, a grant recipient, a parent in Massachusetts, uh, who said, my third grader is slow to wake up in the morning and has trouble sitting still throughout the day, but not only does running club help him wake up, it also focuses him throughout the day, and he too is very proud of the running he has done the past several seasons and about the improvements he's made. And personally, this parent says, I am thankful for the 45 minutes to be outside and exercising with my kids in the morning. We're so grateful for this program. So again, just a couple of ideas, a couple of things that parents and, uh, and grants have, have funded in the past. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the goals of the grant. Another way to think about these goals are the deliverables or, or what we're asking your school to accomplish by the end of the grant cycle. With regard to the physical activity initiative, we would like to see that your project either increases physical activity minutes, so the amount of time students are spending doing physical activity, uh, the percentage of students participating in physical activity, so how many kids are doing that physical activity, or the percentage of time that students are engaging in moderate or, phys or vigorous physical activity. So again, you don't have to do all three of these. The, the grant project does not have to address all three of these areas, but we do wanna make sure that your project will have at least one of these physical activity impacts. So total time, total number of students, or moderate to vigorous physical activity uh, for either of those categories, whether that's uh, a longer amount of time or more students participating. So before we move on to the nutrition project application, I will pause here to see if there are any questions on the physical activity portion or other questions uh, that we've seen pop up. And it looks like we do have uh, a number of questions already. Um, so I'll go ahead and try to get to a few of these. And if I don't get to your question now, I'll try to answer some of them at the end. Or if we don't get to that, then via email afterwards. Uh, 
can a grant be issued to a student advisory committee? That's a, that's a great question, and we uh, love to get more and more students involved in these grants. Uh, the student advisory committee would have to be affiliated with the uh, with the school and, uh, and have their own ID number, I believe. Um, so I'll go ahead and, uh, Jill, it looks like you, you asked that question, and I will follow up with you via email afterwards on what the exact requirements for, for those might be. Uh, but I believe the answer is yes, uh, but I will follow up with you after that. Uh, can multiple schools within the same district apply for the grant? The answer to that is yes as well. Uh, we've uh, had several schools in, in districts apply and the same districts apply for those grants as well in the past. Um, if your school is a non-public K through eight grade school with a 501c3 nonprofit federal tax designation, are you eligible to apply? Again, I'll follow up with you afterwards. I don't wanna uh, commit to that on the call without checking with our, uh, our requirements uh, offline. So I, uh, Aaron, I'll follow up with you after that on that question. If you have applied for and received a grant in the past, uh, great. Jenny, that's, uh, that's a good question. Um, you are still definitely more than welcome to apply now. Uh, I know for some of you, you may be familiar if you've applied in the past with uh, what we've had, what we've called in the past sustainability grants, which are smaller. We've done $500 grants in the past for previously funded schools. That, uh, this year, all of our grants are at $1,000. So if you've applied and received a grant in the past, uh, please definitely feel free to apply again. Uh, if you have a compelling project and a, and a convincing uh, application, then we, we definitely take a look at your application again. You're also welcome to apply for game on grants if you're ready to continue uh, with that kind of next step and, and making sure that you still have the school health team and, and all of that in place. Kelsey, yes, many of the parents that you work with uh, need support to apply for this grant. Uh, can you support them and, and help them apply for their individual school under my account? Uh, you can, yes, you can affiliate with multiple schools, and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the, the, the tips on how to apply and the steps on how to apply. So you can apply as one person for multiple schools, uh, and you can support them along the way. We also have state coordinators and regional managers that can provide support for schools who are interested in applying as well. Uh, before and after schools, yes. Um, game on grant is available is available to non-eligible states. Uh, Melissa, to your question, there being in Colorado, yes, game on grants are available in every state in the country. Um, these states uh, for the parent grants are uh, the parent grants this year are funded by our partners at Aldi, and so the uh, the requirements around eligibility states are states where there are uh, currently Aldi stores. How many past recipients are outside of the 15 mile radius? In the past, it's been anywhere from 10 to 20% of our funded schools have been outside of that 15 mile radius. So it's, it's definitely a significant number. It's, it's, it's not, uh, not zero or, or, or just a few, it's, it's been a significant number. What determines the state's eligibility, uh, Sarah, I, I mentioned those are um, set by our, our grant funder, which is our partners at, at Aldi. And so those are uh, the states that are eligible. Would field days qualify? For this funding, that's a good question. I'll, I'll cover that when we get to uh, some tips on how to apply and, and what we're looking for and not looking for in applications. So uh, let's hold on that, that field day question. Uh, can the fiscal initiative, physical activity initiative, be used to implement a meditation room? Um, that's a that's a great question, and I we have had some uh, creative ideas like that about how to think beyond sort of traditional physical activity and, and parts of the grant, and so we have funded similar types of uh, more social and emotional learning uh, options as well in the past too. So uh, Lily and I would definitely encourage you to think through that or maybe talk with your state coordinator or regional manager uh, and get some tips on how to present that in the most compelling way. Uh, but it's, it's definitely a possibility, so that's a good question. Does the partner, teacher, or staff person need to be identified prior to applying or is permission from the principal enough? Uh, Maria, that's a great, great question, and we do uh, need the person, the partner, teacher, or staff person to be identified on the application. There's a place uh, on the application that asks for that staff, uh, school level co-lead to identify themselves and, uh, and, and put their information in on the, on the application. And do you need a board resolution prior to applying? Uh, that will most likely depend on your school district. We don't require that from Action for Healthy Kids uh, standing, but your school district may. Uh, I know some school districts do require board permission before accepting or applying for grants. So that's, that's more up to your district than it is to us. 
is a thousand the ceiling for this grant? It is for this grant, yes. A thousand dollars is uh is what all of our grants for parent grants are are at. Are at. Uh where can we find the community grants? Uh, George, I, I'll have to follow up with you afterwards. I'm not sure exactly what uh what that question uh refers to, but uh but we can follow up. Um and when the grant money would be distributed, uh, I'll talk about that as we get uh, as we get through. We'll talk about important dates. Uh, does a weight loss class for teens club grade six through eight count? Uh, it could. That's a that's a good idea. Um, and as long as you're funding, uh, looking to fund multiple grade levels, and uh, and it's a large enough sample of the students at the school, uh, it's, it's certainly it certainly could count. Um, the re your question about being in Utah, I know all these stores in your zip code. Um, unfortunately, Aldi has not yet expanded to, to Utah, so uh, we don't have parent grants available in Utah at this time, but I would encourage you to check out uh, the Game On uh, grant possibilities or breakfast grant possibilities. And then finally, I'll uh, get to Michelle's question on how many grants are awarded. Um, right now, we're still finalizing some things. Right now, we have at least 100 grants to award. Nationally, uh, that number could change as we go along. Okay, so moving on to nutrition projects. We'll start again with the grant strategy options, and you can see there uh, what those options look like. So there are a few more nutrition projects options than you saw with physical activities, uh, but really those are things that, again, we've seen in the past to be successful with, uh, with parents leading. Again, we don't have an other option on uh, the nutrition strategies either, but you can definitely check out your uh, the Game On application if you don't see your strategy there or the strategy that fits your project. So here are a few ideas that schools have successfully implemented in the past with uh, their nutrition projects as part of the parent grants. You can see those there. Uh, cooking classes water access, non-food rewards, and, and healthy incentive programs for classroom celebrations or fundraisers. <clears throat> School gardens have been a popular one, case tests also. Um, Rethink your drinks to drink alternative initiatives. All of those parents have successfully implemented in the past and they've uh, seen quite a bit of, of traction at the school on those. And here again is another quote from one of our school partners. <clears throat> you can see that from a parent at a school in Iowa that they've really uh, enjoyed the garden club and, and learned a lot about different types of uh, vegetables and, and fruits that they didn't know about before. I also want to share this one too. This is from a school in Maryland. <clears throat> this is uh, from a midterm report that the school has said, uh, they said the day after a second grade class completed an apple tasting activity, the teacher asked the students what they told their parents when they went home. And one student said, when I got home, I asked my mom to buy some apples because they were so good. I think they are better than Oreo. So uh, I thought that was a fun one to share that uh, after tasting some apples, uh, their reviews were in and they're better than Oreos, which I feel like should be our slogan now um, for any time we do a taste test. Okay, so with regard to your nutrition initiative, we would like to see that your project here, um, you can see the, the goals there. We're looking at knowledge consumption, attitudes, and then the school nutrition environment. So we want to see that students are more knowledgeable about healthy foods and beverages, that they are consuming more healthy foods and beverages, that they improve their attitudes around healthy foods and beverages, uh, or that the school has improved the, the, the general school nutrition environment. So again, similar to the goals and deliverables with the physical activity nutrition, or with the physical activity initiative, you don't have to address all four of these, but you do need to address at least one with your project. Okay, the other deliverables that apply to both types of parent grants include uh, the things that you see on your screen here. So we will talk about the nutrition and the physical activity initiatives separately. These are deliverables that apply to both grants, regardless of whether it's physical activity or nutrition. So we're asking all schools to provide information to students and parents on the importance of physical activity and nutrition to engage parents and families in the school health efforts that they're doing. That really helps to strengthen and sustain those efforts. We ask all schools to work toward becoming a health-promoting school. And that's a school 
that we define as striving to promote a healthy environment and consistently making gains in the way that they promote health to their students, staff, and families. So you'll receive more information and resources about opportunities to show your progress in these areas as part of this grant. We also ask all funded schools to host an Every Kid Healthy Week event during April of 2020 and join schools across the country in celebrating your school health achievements. So we'll talk a little bit more about Every Kid Healthy Week as, as we go along. There's a slide specifically on that too. There's some other reporting deliverables that, require, that we require of all students, all, all schools uh, who are grant funded as well. We, have to, you know, we ask you to submit your terms and conditions to accept the grant right away, uh, to complete a midterm report and submit two photos in December of 2000, and that should say 2019 and 2020, and um, to complete that Every Kid Healthy Week event survey in March of 2020, and then complete a final report and submit three photos in May of 2020 as well. I mentioned earlier in the webinar a couple other changes that we've made for the 2019-2020 parent grants, and they are reflected here in that you don't see them. So we are no longer requiring schools funded through parent grants to complete the full school health index that if you have had any of our grants before, you may have been asked to complete. Um, several of those questions will still appear on the application and the final report so we can measure your progress uh, as a school in, in promoting health. But in an effort to simplify your reporting uh, over the course of the grant, that full assessment will not be required. Uh, and the same goes for forming a full school health team. We definitely encourage you to continue to work toward creating a school health team with representatives from the administration at the school, teachers, staff, and parents. But that is no longer a full requirement of these grants, which are really designed to be project-based and to build momentum around school health throughout the school community to build traction for that as you continue to progress going forward in, in future years. And it's important to highlight here that ideally the grant funding goes directly to the school. Um, we talked a little bit about this and I saw, I saw a couple of questions that came up. We can give a check to PTA or parent groups, but they need to have a tax ID number. Um, so we also require that the individual school does sign off on the grant agreement since the school will be directly engaged in the grant. So that question about can it go to a student advisory board, uh, if they have a tax ID number, it can. Uh, I, I think most student advisory boards probably don't, so it would probably have to go through the school and then to the student advisory board. But again, I'll follow up with you after the, the webinar on that question. Every Good Healthy Week, I mentioned earlier, um, is a, held annually during the fourth week of April and is recognized on the official National Health Observance calendar. Um, it really is it's designed to be a celebration of the school work, of the school health work that you've done over the course of the year and to build support going forward in the school community for school health work moving forward. So it's, I know a lot of schools have used it to build momentum, to end the year on a high note, carry through the summer, and then start the, the next fall uh, really with a head of steam going into to their school health work. Uh, also, schools have used it as a way of celebrating everything that they've done and letting the school community know about all the great things that they've done uh, around school health during the current school year. So I encourage you to check out everykidhealthyweek.org. Now you can get started now, and, and you don't have to be a grant-funded school to host an Every Kid Healthy Week event. So you can check that out now, register an event that you have going on this spring, or, or decide to host one. There's tons of resources there that you can check out and get involved even earlier um, as you're applying for your grant as well. Another new uh, benefit this year from our partners at Active Schools, funded schools will automatically be enrolled as an Active Schools Champion, which is a really great benefit because Active Schools Champion, uh, as you can see there, are the, the benefits you receive access to free resources, webinars, special events, as well as grants that uh, some Active School Champions, some grants are specifically for Active School Champions, um, and some grants are uh, give priority to schools who are at the school's champions as well. So uh, you'll also be the first to hear about some other special events. It's, it's, a, it's a really great organization. If you're not familiar with active schools, I also encourage you checking, uh, to check them out. I'll be sending out this PowerPoint slide deck afterwards with the link to active schools website there that you can click on and learn more about um, our partners there. You also have the opportunity to opt out of this automatic enrollment if you'd like, uh, if you wouldn't want to receive all of those uh, opportunities. And resources. All right, so let's get to uh, the best practices and great ideas on uh, applying for these grants. 
um, and, and other places that you can get some ideas for. So you can check out Parents for Healthy Kids. Uh, <clears throat> we've mentioned that website before and some of the resources that are there and available. Uh, I'd also like to mention Game On resources that are available. That's through the actionforhealthykids.org website. Um, and it's an online guide that, that really has a ton of different activity and project ideas as well um, for you to, to start your brainstorming process with. And here are getting into some of the things that examples of projects that, that we would fund and have funded in the past. These are just really just three examples to demonstrate the types of initiatives that have ongoing nutrition and physical activity components, and they are by no means better than other project ideas. Uh, they're mainly um, just to serve as examples of how to make a, a nutrition or a physical activity initiative ongoing. So, for example, school building a walking trail and hosting quarterly health fairs along the trail to promote healthy eating and encourage families to use the trail. That's a great one that, that incorporates both that physical activity and a nutrition component. So with the parent grants this year, you wouldn't necessarily need to do both of those, uh, but it really because it goes so well together, uh, the walking trail you could use for uh, most of the funding for, and then to continue to host those, uh, those healthy eating and, uh, and health fairs along the way. Uh, monthly case tests and physical activity breaks. Um, so again, that's because that's an ongoing um, initiative. It, it happens every month. The taste tests or the physical activity breaks three to five times per week. That's a great one that we would fund as well because of the, the ongoing nature of that. Um, daily morning announcements about healthy eating, weekly trivia and raffles about the information shared. So it's not just sharing the information, but really making sure that it sinks in. And then family fitness nights that are ongoing. Um, every month over the course of the school year as well. So those are just some of the types of projects that we've seen in the past. And again, uh, our past projects all had to have both a physical activity and a nutrition component, so there is some more flexibility going forward with the parent grant that are split out into two different, uh, two different applications now. So what aren't we looking for? Um, so for example, that top one, the uh, running club for just first grade students doesn't include, include the majority of the students. It's, it's limited to just the first grade student body. Uh, our school hosting a, a taste test during our Every Kid Healthy Week event um, because it's, it's really missing an ongoing nutrition component. It's just during the Every Kid Healthy Week event, um, so we really want to see nutrition initiatives that are more than a one-time thing. The more opportunities that students have to learn about healthy eating, the more likely it will become that they will internalize those nutrition concepts. And a family fitness night, again, not, not ongoing. We want to see something that is uh, over the course of a longer period of time and not just a one-day thing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get into some of the steps to apply here, and I'll go through these relatively quickly. I know we just have a few minutes left. So it does look like we'll go just a little bit past the 145 mark. Um, if you do need to jump off before then, this webinar is being recorded, and I will send out the recording as well as the slide deck afterwards. Uh, in the next two to three business days, so you can keep an eye on that. Um, but here are the, the first steps to apply as you're going through and, and starting to uh, look at how to apply to the parent, the parent grant application. I would recommend starting with the paper application. All of this stuff you can find on parentsforhealthykids.org or actionsforhealthykids.org on the grant section. So start with completing the parent application with your school co-lead and school health team. Make sure you're checking your character counts um, and writing the application as if we have no idea, no, no, we don't know anything about your school or the project. So really uh, breaking it down to the most basic level. Consider having somebody uh, externally re read and review the application uh, and then submit the application in the online portal, which we'll talk about in a second, because no paper applications are accepted. So first step here is to uh, Go ahead and navigate to the Parents for Healthy Kids website and click on the Parents for Healthy Kids grant. Uh, then scroll down to step four under how to apply and click on login or create an account on the Action for Healthy Kids school portal as you see there. That will take you to the Action for Healthy Kids school portal where applications are submitted. This is where schools apply for grants, register their Healthy Week events, and update their school information and more. Creating a new login is, is really easy. All you have to do is provide your name, email, and create a password, and that's it. If you've ever applied for a grant, uh, registered your Everton Healthy Week event, or completed your school health index, anything that happens on the portal, you can use that same login that you've used in the past. Once you log in, you'll see your homepage. 
Um, I find it helpful that I'm ever, if I'm ever lost in, in that portal, then I just click on home up here at the top, um, and, and that helps me to kind of reorient myself. So start by clicking on my profile. This is where you can complete and update your profile. Uh, that helps us get to know you better and will serve as some of the information on your application. Um, next, you can click on Add or Manage Schools uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, and that takes you to the schools there where you can add and affiliate yourself with your school. Um, in other words, you'll want to select the school here that you'd like to apply for a grant. You can affiliate yourself with multiple schools, so if you are a district-level person, you can select all the schools in your district on this page. I know there was a question earlier about uh, being able to apply for more, more than one uh, being able to apply for a grant for more than one school, and this is how you would do that on this page here. If you can't find your school by searching via zip code, it may be that we have your school under a different zip code, um, like if you have multiple buildings or a PO box, or if your school may not be in our system yet. Um, that's not a problem, because on the right-hand side there, you can download a form and email it to us to upload your school in the system, so you can then submit an application. Once you've affiliated yourself with the school, you can then apply for a grant, so then you want to click on grants over here on the left-hand side of your screen. And that's when you'll see this page with all of the available grant opportunities. Since you're on this webinar, we'll assume that you click on either of the period grants, the fiscal activity or the nutrition project, and that takes you here. That includes the eligibility information we discussed, as well as a button to start the application for a single school. That's the one that you'll want to click on to move forward. Um, if you are, uh, like the questioner earlier, applying for multiple schools, you can also click on that application um, and it will cover, uh, it will copy some of your information to multiple schools. You can then click on the Start an Application button, click on the drop down, um, and go to the school, uh, select the school that you'd like to submit a grant application, select the gold button to continue, and that then takes you uh, to here where it is, you see the application. There are several tabs there at the top that you can see, contact information, project details, parent and family engagement, et cetera. Make sure that you complete all of the required information in every tab, otherwise you will receive an error that something is incomplete. Then you can save your progress as you go along so you don't have to do everything in one sitting. Uh, you can work slowly over the course of several weeks before the deadline. Uh, but you do want to go in and make sure that you've completed everything. When you are ready to submit, click on the submit button at the top of the screen. I'm sorry, the bottom of the screen. Once your application has been submitted, you'll see that green grant submitted message at the top there. Okay, quick review. You want to log in or register. Set up your portal profile in the My Profile tab. Affiliate yourself with the school using the My School tab. Click on the grants to see the grants that are available. And then choose the grant you want and begin entering your application. So simple five steps. Uh, but really what will take the longest is, is going through and making sure that you have all the, the good answers uh, for that application. And for that, you'll want to look at the paper application, which is available on the website. And a few tips to help you navigate the school portal technology. You want to make sure that you're using the most up-to-date version of the browsers. Uh, Chrome or Firefox, I think, work best. Save often, move through the application by the tab. Um, all the required responses you want to make sure that you submit. If you have any errors, you will see an error box, uh, so you'll have a chance to go back in and correct any of those. I also find it helpful to save all of my answers in a Word document and then copy and paste those into the application. That way I know that I won't lose anything that I've written um, and have to go back and redo it. Uh, and I also wanted to give a few tips on the grant budget. Um, you'll see, we, we talked about earlier, all schools have to submit a budget for uh, $1,000, um, you, you, the portal won't accept you'll get an error message if you try to do anything more than that, um, and funds cannot be used for staffing. Um, there was a question earlier about when you receive uh, your, your funding. So one, the biggest payment will be 70% upon uh, our completion, or your completion and our receive, receipt of the terms and conditions document. So that's at the beginning of the school year, and then 30%, the other portion, will be after the submission of the midterm report, which happens in January. Uh, so we're just, we just sent out the, the second round for uh, this year's school grant. If your project does require more funding than our grant provides, we will ask that you indicate how you'll provide additional funding 
for the project from other sources. Um, so that way we know uh, that we're not just funding 60% of a project, and if you can't get the other 40%, then the project won't happen. Uh, we'll ask for that, uh, that information as well. If there's anything uh, that you want to put in a zero dollar amount for, you're not using uh, grant funds for, for that uh, item, then just put in NA if you're not, uh, not applicable. Uh, we typically see money, just uh, an FYI, uh, spent on materials, equipment, food for taste tests, uh, incentive items, promotional materials, things like that. Some other general tips on applying, uh, make sure that you're using the application instructions guide that's available on the website as well. Um, that includes an application checklist and also has uh, the key dates on there. Um, make sure that your physical activity uh, or nutrition initiative descriptions clearly describe what your plans are going to do. Check out the FAQ document um, that has additional help on there as well. That's also on the website. Um, you can apply for multiple grant school scans, so a breakfast and a game on or a game on with parent, uh, as we talked about earlier. Uh, the one exception to that is that you cannot apply for both types of parent grants. So you can't apply for both the parent physical activity and a parent nutrition grant. Um, we aren't able to fund both of those. Um, and you just do also want to make sure that you meet the criteria for, for any grants that you're applying for. Uh, and then we encourage you to get creative. We love to see those innovative and unique projects. Uh, the meditation room that was mentioned earlier is a really cool uh, creative idea. Uh, we love to see stuff like that. Um, and we want to support your school in doing something that really ensures every kid in the school is healthy. So our grant application process is collaborative, so please feel free to reach out to our state coordinators or regional managers with questions or for support to make sure that you have the best application that you can make. Uh, as I mentioned, that support, um, state coordinators and regional managers are available to provide some assistance with your application. Uh, we have these webinars, uh, the one today, we have uh, two more that are coming up this week, the Game On Grant one for tomorrow, and then the Breakfast Grant one on Thursday. Uh, the Parents for Healthy Kids website and newsletters provide some other ideas and, uh, and tips, as the, does our Facebook group on school health teams. Uh, we have a school health teams discussion group that you can check out on Facebook there. Monthly newsletters and other resources uh, and, and workshops uh, that also provide some support as well. So we would we love to be partners with you throughout the school year to help you have a successful project. And these are uh, pieces of support, items of support that uh, apply not just as you're applying for the grant, but then once you're funded, uh, you will you will be able to tap into those as well. Uh, and again, some important dates here that I mentioned earlier: uh, applications are due on April 5th. That's the biggest one. The application deadline is April 5th, Friday. Um, so it seems like a long way away now, uh, but it is just, it's just around the corner. So if you haven't started to, to come up with your project ideas, now is the time to do so. So you can really make sure you have enough time to do that. Award notification, notifications go out uh, on Monday, May 13th. Uh, terms and conditions are due back in on Friday, May 31st. And then midterm reports are due in December. Every Good Healthy Week survey is due next March. And then next May is when we'll ask for the final. And finally, um, you can go ahead and contact us if you have any questions. Uh, school grant at actionfellowshealthykids.org is the best uh, email to use. If you have any questions, those will get uh, sent to the right place to answer those. Um, and we will also uh, send out the contact, contact list for our regional managers and state coordinators following this webinar as well. Uh, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any questions. Uh, we are past our time now, so any other questions that are in the box, we'll follow up with you via email, or I know Ellen has been responding to some of those um, as we go along. Uh, so thank you for your questions, and if we did get to those today, we will definitely follow up with you um, as we go along. And then finally, if you have any, uh, like to see any other ideas, resources, uh, please stay up to date with us on, on all of the great things that we have going on that you can see here uh, through our social media channels, channels um, games, recipes, volunteer opportunities, and other ideas for action. And that's it. I want to uh, conclude our webinar, our webinar today by, by thanking Ellen for joining us and uh, answering some of those questions as we go along. And I'd like to thank all of you, our listeners, for the great things that you are doing every day to ensure that kids are healthy, active, and ready to learn. 
Good luck with your grant applications. We're excited to work with you and your school, and we'll follow up with an email in two to three business days with a link to this recording and all the handouts that we discussed. Thanks again for your time, and have a great day.